What's up everybody, it's AJ with eTrail.com. Today we're gonna be checking out the Kurt Clamp-On Bike Rack. This is gonna hold three bikes and it's gonna to attach to the ball mount that's existing on your vehicle. That way you can attach to the ball mount and still tow something behind you. You don't have to choose either or, or find space in your truck or whatever you're towing for these bikes. That can be kind of a hassle. This is kind of an all-in-one solution for getting all your stuff with you on your adventures. Let's check it out. This is a three bike bike rack, but as you can see, we're only gonna carry two today because there's some space issues. We wouldn't be able to fit a third bike here in the middle. So we kind of just put the child's book bike with the adapter here and then the aluminum road bike here. And that's kind of the theme with this bike rack is it does work really well. We have a lot of customers that really like it, gave it good reviews, but there's a few things you gotta look out for, like, you know, Space would be the one I'm just talking about now with the bikes. You gotta make sure there's enough space for the two bikes and against your vehicle. So you see the truck, we actually put a rubber band and a shop towel here just in case this came in contact over here. Now I wedged the, the handlebars up there onto the seat and that's kind of holding it in place. You see that the handlebars aren't going back and forth. But before that, it was coming right up against the vehicle. So that's just something to think about how close that is. You can see how this comes out. The other thing would be the ball mount too like how long that is and where the bike rack itself is going to be positioned on there and where that gives you room so we have quite a long ball mount on there so we're able to get off a little further away than normal if you had a shorter one you might not get this much space the other thing you got to look at the trailer side too what are you going to be hauling we have a pop-up camper today so there's not a toolbox or a whole lot over here that could get in the way but our jack still comes close we were able to twist it out of the way, but if the jack was mounted here, it would be an issue. It would be in the way right here. Now you can make it work if you're not gonna maybe carry all three bikes. You can still put your one bike up here and that wouldn't be in the way, but that's just one of those things. You gotta kind of think about what you're using it in combination with what, and that's how it's gonna fit. One of the ways we were able to get this to work is having a longer ball mount. I think that's the key to making sure this is gonna work with trailers and vehicles this way because you have more room to kind of adjust where the bike rack sits. So originally when we sent it, put it on there, we put it close to the vehicle thinking we'd need, need more of that space on the trailer side. But then the handlebars made contact and the bike rack almost made contact so we realized it's too close. So we moved it further to the trailer because there's not much in the way on our trailer on this one. There's no toolbox or anything. So we were able to do that. I think getting a longer ball mount like this gives you those options to kind of adjust it either way and that way you can definitely make sure it works. Those few issues aside though, it still works pretty well. It holds the two bikes when in any other situation, this wouldn't really be possible. You know, you could take the bikes with you if you had the pop-up camper behind you, maybe try and fit it in the pop-up camper with it collapsed down. They might fit like that, but then you're piling bikes on top of each other and you don't necessarily want to do that. That's like throwing in the back of the truck. I mean, I guess you could do that, but that's not good on your bikes and you probably got low with gear. Maybe you don't even have a truck. Maybe you got an SUV. You could use a roof rack in that instance, but maybe you don't want to mess with that either. Maybe you got a roof box up there already just to carry more stuff with you. You know, all those things kind of eliminate being able to bring these bikes. That's why this comes in so handy. You already got that ball mount on there. You can attach it. This is usable space right here. You got plenty of room. Hopefully, if you don't have a toolbox or a jack in the way with those, you know, like we mentioned before, but this is unusable space. So this is where the bikes are going to fit and allow you to take them with you. Now, let's take it inside and take a closer look at the bike rack. Let's take a closer look at how it holds the bikes on there. Holds it with these cradles that do move back and forth and up and down. You have the rubber straps that secure it in there. You can see how this one's kind of pushed down. It's just because we have the adapter on here to fit the kid's bike, and that's what's causing it to push down there. It doesn't fit in there quite as well, but it does hold it nice and tight. It's not going anywhere because it's pulling down this adapter. So let me remove this one out of the way so we can get a closer look at it. Remove the rubber straps, pretty easy. There's only one issue is that this is flexible. So usually these are hard, so it's easy just to kind of put it over there and attach it but you can see when you go to do that it pushes down on a little bit just a minor thing you'll get used to it's it, once you figure it out i tried pushing it up from the bottom i found that to be a little bit easier if you push up like that and you can get to go through just some tips to help so i'll remove this one too again kind of push down with your thumb to kind of hold it in place so it doesn't bend the whole time while you're trying to pull it with that set aside we can actually see the cradles now. I'll show you their movement like this. For wherever you need to adjust to different frame styles there, you also slide it back and forth. 
that helps you adjust for no frame contact. If you don't, if they're too close here, you can move them back. That's why we had the issue with the center. It just wasn't a whole lot of room for three bikes. So we can kind of just push these off to the side and then give this more room to work and move here. It's a good feature to have. The only thing is that it does move pretty easily. I think you can move it with the bike on there just a little bit. So that's just something else to look out for. But otherwise, it holds it there nice and tight, so that's not an issue at all. And then in the rubberized cradles, it does have grooves to kind of protect those cables on the bottom of your bike so it won't just rest on the cable. It'll sit up here and then the frame will rest right above that. We talked about how the bikes hold there nice and tight by the cradles, but the bike rack itself is nice and tight too. It's just clamped down on the ball mount at the bottom, but then you have these side straps that add extra stability. So there's not even an anti-rattle device on this ball mount that would help out too i would definitely recommend getting one of those with the bike rack but these straps really get that shake and play out you can see i'm moving the bike rack a little bit but not a whole lot it stays on there pretty nicely and that's because of these straps on the side the whole bike rack is made out of a black powder coat steel so you know it's going to hold up just fine when you have it outside if the elements get to it or anything it's not going to bother it also has a weight capacity of 135 pounds, so that's about 45 pounds per bike. So it'd be 45, 45, 45. Something else I definitely want to point out is that you don't have to use it while towing. So some people buy it just to attach it to a ball mount that they already have in their hitch at all times anyway. It fits right on there, it does the job just fine, and then Kurt knows that. That's why they put reflectors on the back. That way, if you are using it just as kind of a bike rack, you can still do that. If any of the issues we mentioned are going to be a problem for you, and you still want to use it, this bike, primarily for hauling your bikes while towing behind you. There are other options out there. So I recommend the jacket from Lippard. That's going to attach to where your jack attaches to on your trailer. And that just gives you a little more height so that, you know, maybe the handlebars won't be a problem anymore because it'll be up and over the top of the back of your truck or vehicle. Or the same can be said with the trailer side of things. Let's get some measurements. First up, we're going to go how far the arms stick out. So I'm going to center the post back here to the very front and that looks to be about 18 inches. So from here to here. And then we're going to go how far, we're going to measure how far apart the arms are. So center the cradle, center the cradle. We ran into a slight issue with the mountain bike where it didn't fit on here because the arms were a little too spread out. So the frame wasn't able to fit on those arms. So we're going to go center that, the center here, it looks to be 14 and a half inches of spread here. Now another thing to look at while we're here is let's look at the cradles. From end to end, looks like an inch and three quarters, but it is flexible so you can get this out to about two inches if you have that bigger frame for, like I said, a mountain bike would fit in here still because it would push out just a little bit more and be just fine. The final measurement is going to be how much it adds to the ball mount, and that's height. So I'll go between here, right at the top, looks to be about 28 inches. So that's how much it adds to the top of the ball mount. And hopefully these measurements helped you out so you didn't buy this when it's too late and doesn't work with your stuff. Now you can kind of check what you got and see if it's going to work. Went ahead and removed the bike and took this off because I want to show you how easily this installs. First off though, this is how compact it gets. It gets pretty small, which is good because you can easily throw this in your garage for storage, the back of your vehicle, or even your rig that you're towing behind you. So I like that, and it's lightweight. It's not cumbersome to pick up and install, and it's pretty easy to install. So let's just go ahead and get to it. First off, these arms fold back behind, so you want to go ahead and fold them up front. That way they're facing this way, because once you put this down on the shank like this, you can't flip the arms anymore. It's gonna push it back together. By pushing the arms at the top together, it opens up the bottom. I'm gonna push on these arms, kind of push it apart and get it started. And then I'll come back here to the handle. I'm just gonna push down on that. That'll further secure it into place. Come back through and add the pins. Just push on through. Do the one over here too. It gets a little more stability out of the arms.
And if it's not lined up completely perfect, you can kind of lift up on the arm a little bit and it'll be easier to push that pin in or take it out too. At this point, you can see a little bit of shake and play in the rack. Now you can get an anti-rattle device down there for the ball mount, but you also have these straps and I'm just gonna show you how much it shakes now and then I'm gonna attach the straps and show how much it takes out of there. So these hooks are just gonna go in the seams here in the side, right about there, and then you can just pull it tight. Got it on that side, already taking a lot of it out, and I'll go to the other side and do the same thing. With the straps attached, check out how much it took out of it. Now I'm shaking back and forth. The arms bounce up and down just a little bit, but this main part isn't moving at all. So it takes a lot of that shake and play out, which makes it a lot safer when you have your bikes up here on the rack. Now normally I would have just tied up the straps and we'd have been on our way, but I want to show you how to break it down too, because that's important on this one. So first off, we'll go back to kind of do the reverse order. We'll pull our pins, just get these ready. Now we can't fold the arms back now because they'll hit the vehicle, but You'll need that when you get it broken down. So just pull those out and we'll come down to here. Now this part shows up in a lot of the reviews on our website and it says a lot of people smash their hands there, they get hit by this part. Well, they fixed that. That was in an older model. Now they had the stopper here and the stopper is gonna pop up and hit that and that keeps it from hitting your hand. So it used to not be there, so then it would pop up and hit your hand real quick because it's in there nice and tight when you pull this and pull up on it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So now I'm gonna pull this lever and then pull up on this too because that stopper, it's not gonna pop up and hit my hand. And see how fast it popped up like that? Luckily that catches it and now that problem's gone. So now it's time to release this so you can fully collapse it. So what you want to do is put one hand here just to get it started. Push down on this here. That way you can pull that out just a little bit and you'll feel it. And then it starts to go in, you can let go and then continue to push the arms in. And then you can pull it off of the ball mount, flip the arms back and we're back to its folded up state. Well, hopefully you saw that it wasn't that bad to get it installed or you know, take it off the ball mount. It's not that complicated. You get used to it after the first couple times you do it. I'm really glad they fixed that part with the handle because there was a lot of reviews on that and you know, people getting their hands smashed, but now that's gone so you have no problems like that. That really eliminates one of the biggest problems we saw people were saying online. Now, I think this is going to be a great option after using it and working with it today. I wasn't so sure, but I kind of like it. I think it's a great option if you want to tow something behind you and bring your bikes with you and you don't have the space to put the bikes inside or on your roof or anywhere else. Like I said it before, you can use that space that's open right here towards the back and carry those bikes and they're all your way. Well, I think that does it. Thanks for hanging out and I hope this helped.